I'm fascinated by coins from the world over. Collecting coins is a passion for me. Copper, nickel, steel, the luster they give is so indicative of prosperity and well-being. Since times immemorial, these metallic elements are man's best friend and they continue to do so even today. Want to know how and why? Meet me in the studio and I shall tell you all about it. Hello and welcome to another episode on the physical properties of metals. Today we look at the elements that constitute our world. In this episode we'll classify elements into metals and non-metals and study their various uses. We'll also learn about the physical properties of metals and non-metals and then take a look at the viable exam strategies to boost your scores in exam decoded. An aluminium foil that's wrapped around food can be torn away easily, whereas a saucepan made of the same element is so strong. Various elements have variety of properties. It would, however, be difficult to remember the individual properties of all these elements. So, let's make it simple. We can group elements on the basis of electronic configuration, which is the distribution of electrons in various shells. On the basis of this, they can be broadly classified into two categories, metals and non-metals. Those elements which have one, two or three valence electrons are called metals and those with four to eight valence electrons are known as non-metals. Metals and non-metals are not just categories that appear in your textbooks. In fact, they are a crucial part of our everyday existence. Be it the alarm clock that wakes you up in the morning or the utensils that your mom uses to cook food for you to the bus ride that you take to your school, you'll find yourself using and relying on metals. Certain metals also have a huge significance for our country as a whole. What do I mean? Let's presume for a moment that your father is a nuclear scientist. In that case, he'll deal with metals such as titanium, chromium, manganese, etc. These metals play an important role in strengthening the economy and the defense of the country. And that is why they are also referred to as strategic metals. Non-metals, on the other hand, are small in number. And though they play a very important part in our lives, their use is not as apparent as that of metals. Carbon is one of the most important non-metals as it is the basic constituent of all living cells. Another essential non-metal is oxygen, without which of course we cannot imagine life. Besides this, sulphur is present in our hair, onion, garlic, wool and in medicines. So, as you have seen, both types of elements play a very significant role in our lives. Although both metals and non-metals have their respective uses, they differ widely in their electronic configuration, physical state, electrical conductivity and other properties. Let's study these in detail. We usually find iron, copper, aluminium and other metals in their solid states at room temperature. Mercury is an exception to this rule. You can observe the fluid nature of mercury in the thermometer used to measure temperature. Another metal, gallium, although a solid, has such a low melting point that it melts in room temperature. Non-metals, on the other hand, can be found in all the three states of matter. Iodine, carbon, sulphur, phosphorus exist in solid state, whereas hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen and chlorine are gases. The only non-metal in liquid state is bromine. I'm sure you've heard of terms like nerves of steel and steely resolve. Well, these terms actually refer to the tensile strength of steel. The term tensile strength refers to the amount of stretching 
or stress a material can withstand before breaking or failing. Apart from zinc and mercury, most metals possess high tensile strength, meaning they can withstand high stress. However, non-metals have a low tensile strength as the force of attraction among non-metallic molecules is less, as a result of which they break easily. We use metals in so many shapes and sizes. Ever wondered how can they be molded into different shapes? This property is called malleability. This property can be explained on the basis of the ability of metals to withstand a high degree of stress. In other words, they have a high tensile strength. However, you must note that non-metals have low tensile strength as a result of which they can't be beaten into sheets and break easily. Let's understand this practically. These pieces of iron, copper and zinc can be beaten into sheets when they are struck with a hammer. As you can notice, they also produce sound when struck with a hard substance. On the contrary, non-metals like sulphur, iodine or graphite break easily when struck. The malleability of metals is due to the regular arrangement of ions within the metallic lattice. The property of metals being malleable makes them suitable for a wide variety of uses. Non-metals on the other hand are not malleable and they shatter or crumble when struck with a hard substance. So we have seen that the toughest of metals have the ability to be beaten into thin sheets. Fascinating, isn't it? It's time now for me to take a question from a student. Hello ma'am, I have a question. Which metal is the most malleable? Well, the most malleable metal is gold. And it is because of this reason that it's used in jewellery. That requires such intricate designing. Yet another property of metals is that we can beat metals into really thin wires and this is because of the ability of atoms of metals to roll over each other and occupy new positions without breaking. The electrical connections at our homes are possible due to this wonderful property of metals. Very thin metal wires carry huge amount of electricity from the electricity poles to our houses. Amazing, isn't it? You would be surprised to know that one gram of silver can be drawn into two kilometers of silver wire and one gram of gold can be pulled to a thread of up to three kilometers. Metals that do not exhibit this property are lead, sodium and potassium because they have low tensile strength. Now as far as the non-metals are concerned, you already know that non-metals are brittle and therefore cannot be rolled into wires. A lump of sulphur crumbles when hit or pulled on. So, now you know how much effort goes into processing a diamond, a woman's best friend. Let me now talk about another property of metals, thermal conductivity. Visit your kitchen to understand this better. We already know that most utensils are made of iron, zinc, copper and aluminium. Why do we use these metals for preparing food? The answer is that these metals spread heat throughout the material evenly and quickly. Let's take a look at a simple activity to understand the phenomenon better. Clamp different metal wires on a stand and fix a pin on the other end of the wire. On heating the metal wires, we'll see that the wax melts due to heat transferred at that point and that the pin falls down. The metals, however, do not melt except for tin. Tin has a tendency to melt at low temperature while in the case of lead wire the pin does not fall. This ability of metals to conduct heat is called thermal conductivity. Metals possess thermal conductivity due to the freedom with which electrons flow through them. Amongst all metals, silver is the best conductor of heat and lead is the poorest. And non-metals such as sulphur, phosphorus, iodine also do not conduct heat. Wondering why you need to know all this? The answer is simple. All this information is likely to be asked in your exams. Another property of metals and non-metals that helps in distinguishing between them is electrical conductivity. Electrical conductivity refers to the ability of a substance
to allow electric current to pass through it. Let's conduct a simple experiment to see how this works. Take a battery, a torch bulb fitted in a holder and connect it with connecting wires along with crocodile clips. There is a gap between the ends of these clips so that no current flows in the circuit. Place the metals, gold, silver, zinc, copper, lead, one by one to be tested in the clips. Switch on the battery so that current starts flowing from it. As you'll observe, in case of metals, the bulb glowed, showing that all metals are good conductors of electricity. This property of metals is due to the presence of free or mobile electrons. These free electrons conduct electric charge. While silver and copper are amongst the best conductors of electricity, iron and mercury offer greater resistance to the flow of current. And though silver is the best conductor of electricity, we do not use silver wires in our homes as that will turn out to be very expensive. What we commonly use therefore are copper and aluminium wires. If you were to conduct the same experiment with non-metals such as sulphur, phosphorus, iodine, you would see that the bulb would not glow. As you can see with non-metals, the bulb glows only in the case of graphite. Can you tell me why is it so? While you figure out the answer, I'll take a short break. Stay tuned.